Many vehicles feature a sound bar type enclosure that holds the factory speakers or subwoofer. Often though, these factory enclosures lack bass performance and they're just not ready for a high performance aftermarket speaker or subwoofer. What steps can we take to make these plastic enclosures have better bass performance and better speaker performance so that we can achieve that audio nirvana that we all seek? That my friends is coming up. What's up my fabrication family, Mark here. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. On this channel I do car audio tutorials and reviews and build log videos just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So as many of you guys know, right now I'm working on doing a Jeep build. And in this Jeep, I want to install some aftermarket speakers into the rear sound bar. Before we get started though, I just want to mention that the things I'm gonna do in this video can be applied to literally any vehicle. These techniques could also be used for aftermarket speaker pods or subwoofer boxes. So although you might not be working specifically on a Jeep, many of these techniques and materials could be implemented into your build to get great results. Let's get started on sound treating that Jeep soundbar. To start this project, I'm gonna be removing the factory speakers from the rear soundbar. Once the factory speakers are removed, I can remove the whole soundbar from the vehicle by detaching six different screws. Now for this project, we're lucky that I can remove the soundbar because it'll be easier to show on camera, but just know that this might not be the case for every vehicle, so some vehicles you might have to do the sound treatment process within the vehicle. So let's go through everything that we're going to need for this project. First off, I'm holding on to the factory grill from the soundbar because I'll be using that to make a custom adapter. Next up, we'll need some aftermarket speakers, and in this case, I'm using Rockford Fosgate Power Series T16 coaxial speakers. For sound treatment, I'll be using several different materials, the first of which is SoundSkin Sound Deadener. I'll also be using some closed cell foam and some cloth Tessa tape. So here's the dealio. Since I'm upgrading the speakers in this soundbar to aftermarket speakers that are more powerful and can produce more bass, I want to make sure that I don't have any rattles. One of the key things that can rattle within this soundbar is the wiring, so we're going to address that first. Now as I start poking around and looking at this wiring harness, I can tell that Jeep actually did a pretty good job at making sure that this wiring won't create any sound issues. But this isn't always the case in every vehicle, you may find that you might have to sound treat some of the OEM wiring. Now in my case, I'm going to be running some new aftermarket wiring to these speakers that's a little bit bigger, so I'm going to show you how we sound treat it anyway. What I'm doing here is using a simple piece of string and tying it to a wire harness. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can remove this whole harness from the soundbar and then later I'll be able to pull everything back through easily. So here I am removing the OEM wiring harness and you can see what I was talking about how it's actually pretty insulated and you can also see the string hanging out the opposite ends so it'll be easy to pull back through later. In order to determine how much wire I need, I lay it on top of the soundbar, and I'm of course going to cut myself a little bit extra. It's always better to have more than you need than not enough. Now that the wires are out of the way, I'm going to apply some SoundSkin Sound Deadener. SoundSkins is a constraint layer damper product that serves the purpose of reducing the resonance within the vehicle panels, thus preventing loss of acoustic energy. What's also pretty unique about SoundSkins is the face of it actually has a soft closed cell foam layer on top, which further insulates the sound and helps to decouple two materials that otherwise might vibrate against one another. In other words, this material helps to enhance bass response and it helps to prevent vibration noises. You can see that it's simply applied by removing the backing material, sticking it where you want it, that's what she said, and then using a wooden roller. For the wiring that needs to run over to the left side speaker, I feel pretty confident about this piece of foam, so I'm using it to run through. Now I do need to have a little bit of wire sticking out so that I can reach the speaker, and in order to prevent this from vibrating against the plastic, I'm going to be sound treating it. To do this, I'm using a piece of closed cell foam and cloth Tessa tape. I start by securing one end of the closed cell foam using the Tessa tape, and then I wrap this whole harness. I'm leaving the stock wire harness in position just in case I ever reinstall the stock speakers, but I just make sure I wrap it up with some of the closed cell foam so that it can't vibrate against anything. While I have the new wiring exposed, I strip the wires and apply new crimp terminals. 
To give things a finished look and to be able to easily identify positive and negative, I apply heat shrink. I then of course repeat this process for the right side speaker as well. I need to make a hole in the side of the soundbar in order to install this aftermarket large size wiring, so I'm using a stip drill, and then I of course finish things off by installing a grommet. Once this grommet is installed, I can feed the speaker wires through it, and I want to make sure that I have an airtight bond on the inside, so I apply a little bit of butyl rope. This leaves me with a little bit of the wiring still exposed, so I just make sure that I once again do sound treatment by applying the closed cell foam and wrapping it with Tessa tape. With all the wiring good and protected, I can now feed it back into the sound bar. Here you can really, really see how using the string absolutely helped to pull the wiring harness back into its original position. I definitely recommend taking the time to use that little trick. And if you think that's a cool little trick, do me a favor real quick and just slam that like button. In order to prevent internal reflections inside the soundbar from bouncing around and coloring the sound, I'm adding polyfill. Polyfill also helps to make the air within the enclosed space seem as if it's larger as it slows down the air and thus reduces the system resonance. This is a classic way of making a speaker or subwoofer play slightly lower and works well within the soundbar because it's such a small space. I just make sure that I leave plenty of room around the back side of the speaker so that the speaker can still easily move once installed. Now off camera, I've made custom speaker adapters and I'll be showing you guys how I did that in a separate video. All I have left to do now is reinstall these speakers into the speaker adapters and then reinstall the sound bar within the vehicle. Let's take a quick listen to the rear speakers only. Overall, going through these few steps to add a few sound insulation materials can make a big difference in the output of the sound, and best of all, I didn't experience any rattles when testing the soundbar. Thank you for taking the time to check out this video. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe so you can see how I made the custom adapter for the speakers, and in an upcoming video, I'll be showing what I like to use for making easy to remove speaker wires. A special thanks to Eddie, Brian, Ali, Corey, Pedro, Finchie, EJ, Emmanuel, Rory, Truman, and Jerry. Thank you everyone for watching.